and I'm going to show you hopefully pretty quickly how to set up an electronic drum kit to work in Logic Pro's drum kit designer. So we're going to assume that you have your drum brain on and your drum pads connected. Alright, and we're going to open up Logic Pro, create a new software instrument using Drum Kit Designer as the plugin. We're going to open up Drum Kit Designer if it doesn't open automatically. And next to User Default, we're going to click a producer kit. We're going to select something that is pretty simple, like a pawn shop kit. All right, notice how all your pieces are highlighted. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to click on MIDI effects and select Scripter. Brings up a JavaScript editor. Leave that alone. Next to Factory Default, click on Factory and Drum Kit Designer Remapper. It brings up a list of available drum pieces in Logic Pro and what each one is mapped to in Logic Pro. All right. So we're going to strike one of our triggers. In this case, you're not hearing anything. I'm striking my hi-hat. It's sending G-sharp 2. So I want to go to the hi-hat shank and select G-sharp 2. All right. You're going to go down the list to make sure nothing else is mapped to G-sharp 2. Alright, now when I hit my hi-hat, I hear a hi-hat sound. Alright, since we're on the uh, symbols, uh, the next one, alright, I'm hitting my ride symbol, but it's triggering the wrong sound. So I hit my ride symbol. I see in Logic Pro that it's sending D-sharp 1. So I'm going to go down to my ride out and choose D-sharp 1. And ride in is also D-sharp 1. Now, if I hit my ride, I still hear uh, something that's not a ride. So I want to make sure that nothing else is mapped to D-sharp 1. And I see clap is mapped to D-sharp 1. I don't want to use a clap. So you have to pick another sound. All of these MIDI sounds down here, these are not drum sounds. So you can pick anything down at the bottom of the list. Now if I hit my ride pad, I got a ride sound. All right. Hi, Tom. That also is not, is not triggering the right sound. It's sending a C-sharp 1. Yeah, C-sharp 1. So my high tom, we need to change that to C-sharp 1. Make sure nothing else is triggering a C-sharp 1. And you see side stick is triggering a C sharp one. So for side stick right now, we'll pick something else. It doesn't make any difference. So my high tom is correct. My high hat is correct. And my right is correct. All right, I'm hitting a snare trigger. It's sending A sharp 1, but I'm not hearing a snare sound. 
So for snare, I'm going to pick a sharp one. And now some pads will trigger different sounds if depend on where you hit them. Um, my snare is not one of those. But now, so, so now that I've uh, chosen the snare center and mapped it to A sharp one, I hear a snare when I hit that pad. All right, now we're going to map the side stick. I hit the trigger that's supposed to be a side stick. It's sending C sharp two. So we have to go to the side stick here and change that to C sharp two. Go through the list to make sure nothing else is sending C sharp two. And it is. So now if I hit my side stick, yeah. Okay, yeah. It's sending a C sharp two note to Logic Pro and Logic Pro has mapped C sharp two to the side stick. So that's good. Now we're going to do the floor tom. I'm hitting my floor tom trigger and nothing's happening. It's sending D2, but there's no sound. So we're going to change our low tom from F1 to D2. Make sure nothing else is mapped to D2. Doesn't look like it is. Now I hit my floor tom trigger. It's sending D2 to Logic Pro, and D2 is mapped to a floor tom. So we're going to hit our triggers again. That's my ride. It's mapped correctly. Hi hat, floor, uh, high tom, snare, side stick, and floor tom. So now we're going to do the kick. When I press my kick pedal, it's sending F-sharp 1 to Logic Pro, but we're not getting a kick signal. So we're going to change kick to F-sharp 1. Go through the list to make sure nothing else is mapped to F-sharp 1. And guess what? Hi-hat closed tip is. So now, if I don't change anything, Okay, good. I got a kick sound. On F sharp one. All right, good. One more problem. I'm hitting my hi-hat pedal and I'm getting a floor a uh, kick sound. So we're going to go to, in Logic Pro, look up here, and when I hit my kick pedal, or when I hit my hi-hat pedal, it's sending A1. So we're going to go to the hi-hat foot close, change that to A1. We're still not getting the right sound because there's another instrument map to A1, our low tom. I don't have a low tom, so you can just scroll down in the list and pick anything. Now I'm hitting my hi-hat pedal. It's sending A1 to Logic Pro. A1 is mapped to a hi-hat pedal. All right, we got one more mapping to do with the hi-hat. When you press your hi-hat pedal down and hold it down, and then you hit your hi-hat trigger, you should still get a sound. All right, it's sending G1 
to Logic Pro, but there's no sound coming out because G1 is not mapped to anything. So we're going to pick one of these hi-hat sounds. Um, like open edge, maybe. Change that to G1 and see how that sounds. It's not working. So click close. That needs to be A1. All right, G1. We'll check this hi hat close tip and make that G1. Make sure nothing else is mapped to G1. All right. I want my open high hat to sound like it's open and it's closed. So when I just hit the hi-hat, it should sound more open than that. It's sending a G-sharp 2 uh, note to Logic Pro. We're going to take this hi-hat open edge, change that to G-sharp 2. Try that. You can keep playing with that until you find something you like. We can change this to G2. Doesn't work. G sharp 2. Yeah. And disable the hi-hat shank. I don't like the way that sounds. It's not the right trigger. Anyway, we have all our triggers working correctly. Hi-hat pedals. Hi-hat cymbals. Oh, uh, Hi-tom, snare side stick, floor tom, and ride. So what we're going to do is save this. Next to Drum Kit Designer Remapper, click on the drop down arrow key, click on Save As. And we'll call it D4 drum kit, something like that. And we'll click on save. Now we can go into the pawn shop kit over here in drum kit designer and change the way our drums sound. So I've highlighted the drum the bass drum. Pressing my bass drum trigger and I can choose a different instrument and tune it the way I want. You can dampen it. And do the same thing with your other drum pieces. All right. You're going to right click on the toms, choose a different tom set, and choose this one if we. Yeah. All right, 
And we can dampen that as well if we want. Go to your hi-hat, just right click on it. Ignore the fact that you might hear a kick, just ignore it. And then we can pick different hi-hats that we like. All right, ignore the kick sound. Then we're going to go to our ride. Right click on that. Choose a different ride. Okay, and the snare, right click on the snare and choose whichever one you like. And there are quite a few. Okay, so now you've got all your pieces tuned the way you want them. You can tune it higher, you can, or lower, you can dampen it. You can turn the gain up. Once you have what you like, click on the drop down arrow key. Click on save as. And name it something different. D4 Pawn Shop. Hit. And yeah, I've been doing this all day, so I'm going to replace that. All right, that is the new software instrument patch that we just created in DrumKit Designer. So now I can close out of the remapper over here on the left. Close out of that. Leave DrumKit Designer open for now. Playing all of our triggers, we make sure they work. Okay. Now we're going to save this to our library. So over here on the left, we're going to click on Save. It's already named Elisa's D4 Pawn Shop Kit. Click on Save. Just save it. I like to save my work uh, as much as I can. Okay. Now, one last thing is when we created this drum kit designer drum kit, it was a multi out. So what will happen is there will be a separate channel strip for each instrument. So we're going to go into the mixer. Down here in the strip that says the Alessis uh, pawn shop kit, we're going to click on a plus. And notice how a new channel strip appears for the kick. Snare top, snare bottom, hi-hat, hi-tom. We don't have a, a mid-tom. We can delete that in a minute. So your low-tom. And the symbols are routed to the room effects, so... We can just add maybe one more. That's fine. Okay. So now when I play, leave the mixer open. When I play the tom, you're going to see signal is going into the main Alesis D4 pawn shop kit strip. And it's also going into the tom strip. Same thing with your hi-hat, your ride, Floor tom, side stick, snare, hi-hat pedal, and your kick, and your closed hi-hat. So everything is going into its own channel. Now we know everything is working the way we want. We have sound coming out. 
we can close out of the drum kit designer. Down here in the mixer, we're going to highlight all these new channels we just created. Um, I'm going to highlight everything that has an instrument on it. And yeah, my computer is really slow. And we're going to right click, left click on create track. All right. Notice how up here at the top now, there's a separate track for each of your drum kit pieces. Hi hat. Hi tom. Snare. Side stick. Floor tom, hi hat pedal, and your uh, your pick. All right, so we are going to save these mixer settings. So what we do is you highlight the Alesis D4 Pawn Shop Kit. That's the one that has the plugins on it. You want to make sure and highlight the instrument track that has the plugins on it. And you're going to click on Save. You can call it whatever you want. I'm going to leave mine named as Elisa's D4 Pawn Shop Kit. Click on Save. And notice on the left, the new patch that you just created will show up. So now, if we create, ignore this, if we go into Logic Pro and create a new instrument track, we can load the Alesis D4 Pawn Shop Kit, and all the settings will be as you created them, and you can just play your drums. We can, trust, we can test that. So we're going to say... Just for now, I'm going to save this as a template. We'll call it Elisa's D4 template. I just don't like to say, I don't like to close out of anything without saving it. Okay, so now we're going to close that. No, I don't want to save it. Open up a new one. And that's pretty much about it.